Now, thinking back to our uh, epistle reading, that uh, uh, reading from uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians, I wondered if if you, like I did, did you balk a little bit at that first line? Uh, you, brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Called to be free? Uh, I'm not sure about you, but right now I'm not feeling very free. Actually, I kind of feel a little bit stuck, stuck in my house, and sometimes it feels like, like the walls are getting uh, closer and closer to me each and every day. My uh, normal forays out into the world, they don't seem to be helping much. Uh, Jen and I went to the grocery store yesterday, and I said, well, let's just drive around a little bit. It's so nice to be out. I want to drive around and look at what's going on outside. And really, all I want is to go and sit at a Starbucks or a Phil's and drink a coffee inside in, in public. That's, that's really what I want to do right now. I know shelter in place, it's meant to keep our, our bodies healthy, but it does something to our, our minds and, and it does something, I think, to our, our spirits even. We want to get out. We want to be free. But I'm not feeling very free these days, and I'm guessing you're probably not either. But this morning, we're going to take a uh, closer look at that letter uh, to the Galatians. And, and let's take a look at that first line of our reading again. Uh, again, this is the Apostle Paul. He's the one who's called uh, by Jesus to take the good news of the gospel uh, to the Gentiles, that is the, the non-Jewish world uh, in the first century there. And, and he's writing to a church that has gotten a little bit hung up on following the law, uh, that, that is uh, following the old ways of doing things, and really uh, not just following the law, but actually relying on the law and their own works of the law to uh, justify themselves, to make them right uh, before God. Uh, but throughout this letter to the Galatians, uh, Paul reminds them, he reminds this church in Galatia, that uh, that particular way of life is actually kind of a dead end. It's a dead end because although God's law is a good thing, God's law has given it to us for our benefit, uh, no one is actually justified by the law. We can't uh, make ourselves right before God by the law. And in fact, the good news of Jesus is that uh, by his death and resurrection, uh, that is how we are made righteous in God's sight. That is how we are made right before him. And thus we are set free from the demands of the law. Yeah, I know it might not seem like it right now at this point in our lives, but we were called to be free. We were called to rest in the amazing love that God has for us. Love that is demonstrated to us when, when Jesus, he takes our sin uh, to the cross, crucifies it there, buries it in the grave, and because of that, we are free. Can you imagine the feeling for the Galatians, that feeling of, of freedom, of hearing this good news that Jesus brings? We don't have to do anything to be declared righteous in the eyes of God. Jesus has actually already done it for us. The pressure is off. The weight has been lifted off of our shoulders. We are free. As I said at the beginning over the past few weeks, uh, we've been diving into this sermon series called Planted. And, and once again, the whole goal of this series is to take a, a look at our mission statement as a congregation and then ask the simple question, well, how do we accomplish this? What does it look like in, in my life? What does it look like in our ministry at St. Mark? So if we look at our mission, it says this, connecting people with the vibrant love of Jesus. Well, now we want to know what that means for us as individuals and as a congregation. And over the past few weeks, uh, we've been kind of uh, laying it out, this vision for uh, what our spiritual lives look like and what our ministry looks like at St. Mark. So we are connected with the vibrant love of Jesus and, and we want to invite others to be connected with the vibrant love of Jesus as well. And so we, we become laser focused, laser focused our, our time and our efforts on, on three things, being rooted in Christ, growing together in God's word and branching out in love to our community. 
We picture a, a tree, a tree from one of the orchards that, that used to grow here in, in Silicon Valley, the Valley of Heart's Delight, right? We picture a tree, it's deeply rooted and, and it grows, grows from the ground up, of course, and, and it branches out, rooted in Christ, growing together in God's love and branching out in love to our community. That's the, the vision of ministry, how we go about connecting people with the vibrant love of Jesus. And so we've seen a couple weeks ago that being rooted in Christ means having our identity transformed. See, it's no longer about me. It's no longer about what I do or what I accomplish uh, or even uh, you know, who I'm, I'm related to or connected to. See, it's all about being connected with the vibrant love of Jesus. Our identity is rooted in who we are as God's beloved children. Our identity is rooted in what Christ has done for us to forgive us of our sins and bring us into everlasting life. So we are rooted in Christ then, and, and we long to come and receive God's gifts week after week. Just like roots soak up water from the soil, we soak up that, that nourishment as God just pours out his gifts on us. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. That's what we get as we gather together as God's people week after week, whether it's in person or, or even online, we can still receive God's gifts. Of course, we long for that time where we can be together in one room and, and, and receive these things together. But even now, God is pouring out his love on us. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. That is what, that's what it means to be rooted in Christ. And then last week, we talked about what it means to be growing together in God's word. The Christian life isn't just about checking that box of baptism and then confirmation and then moving on with our lives. No, it's about a, a lifetime of, of growing and being formed by Christ. And we saw last week as we looked at Psalm 1, it's, uh, we have the opportunity then to delight in God's word, to meditate on it day and night. That's what the psalm says. And, and as we do that, both individually and, and especially as a community, we grow together in God's word delighting and meditating on it. And then finally this week, we're, we're going to dive deeper into branching out in love to our community and the world. Yes, God's people, we're called to, to love and serve our neighbors, and that's not just the people that live next door to us, but uh, in this, this world, our neighbors are really everybody. And so this morning, we're going to take a little bit of a look at that Galatians text and it's going to be our guide and show us what it means to, to branch out into our community and the world. In that text, notice how Paul talks about freedom. He talks about freedom in such a way uh, as, as it's a gift that we receive in, in our baptism. It's a gift that we receive as we're declared righteous by God. And, and certainly, uh, we are free from a lot of things. The gospel sets us free from many things, from sin, from the penalty of that sin. We are set free from death because Christ has overcome it and declared victory over death by his resurrection. We are set free from all of this. And yet, uh, recall what Paul says. He says, uh, don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. That is, don't use your freedom to just do whatever you want. He, uh, that word flesh for, for Paul, it doesn't mean that our, our earthly, our physical bodies are inherently bad. You know, we're, we're God's good creation. But flesh, uh, instead, for Paul, means uh, that uh, which is actively opposed to God and his purposes and to God's spirit. And uh, we, uh, as Lutherans, we often talk about being both sinner and saint at the same time. We have these two uh, opposing things pulling at us. And in our sin, in our, our fleshliness, oftentimes we, we are opposed to uh, the will of God and his spirit in our lives. But Paul's call to the Galatians, Paul's call to us, is that our freedom wouldn't enable us to, to take advantage of this and to, to continue to, to, to act and live in those fleshly ways. And Paul says the works of the flesh are obvious, and he has this big laundry list of the works of the flesh, we recall. 
But what Paul urges us to do is to, to walk by the Spirit, to keep in step by the Spirit. Paul urges us to live our, our Christian lives, to be free for the purpose of others, to love and serve others. See, what Paul wants us to do is to use our freedom to live a life that's directed outwards, to live a life that perhaps looks a lot like uh, what happens when a tree firmly rooted in the, in the ground grows and then branches outwards. It uses its freedom to grow outwards. See, the Christian life powered by the Spirit is a life that, that radiates outward like the branches of a tree. And so the call to, to live as free people in Christ. It's not just freedom from something. It's not just freedom from sin or freedom from death. It's actually a call to live uh, as free to do something. We're free from a lot of things, but we're also called free to be free to do something. That is free to grow in Christ, free to find our identity in, in him who is everlasting and free to use our freedom, not for our own selfish gain, not to do whatever we want, not to take advantage of God's grace, but free to love and serve our neighbors. I mean, this is the whole idea of branching out into our community. We are free to love them. We don't have to love them, but we're free to love them in, in a lot of significant life-changing ways. The branching out in love, it's just this outgrowth of being rooted in Christ and growing together in God's love. It's the direct results of, of being immersed in the gospel from the moment of our baptisms. And it's a growth that, that, like I said, freely reaches out to those around us. Freedom to love, freedom to serve. And that's what Paul is talking about as he talks about freedom. We are called to be free. And our Christian service, as we're free to love and serve our neighbors, our Christian service, it's not just uh, mere volunteerism. It's not just doing something nice for someone else because you're, you're paying it forward. No, that's not what Christian service is all about. Our Christian service is about connecting people with the vibrant love of Jesus. Our, connect, our Christian service is what our lives just look like in our freedom because we're transformed by the love of Christ and set free. A Christian service means that we're just free to love and serve our neighbors. And I know these last couple months, we've seen so dramatically how much the world needs this incredible love of Jesus. The world doesn't just need volunteerism. The world needs the love of Jesus. See, if we, if we needed any more proof of this, we got it, that the world is hungry for the love of Christ. This pandemic has shown us the need and the desire for people to be loved and cared for in, in real, life-changing, dramatic ways. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, at times like this, we, uh, as Christians, rarely have any good answers you know, we can't answer questions like, why? Why is this pandemic happening right now? Why did someone's loved one get sick? Why did someone themselves contract uh, COVID-19 and get sick? We don't have answers to these questions, but we do have a response. We might not have answers to the questions, but we have a response. And it may seem small and insignificant uh, on a grand scale, but for the person who is in front of us, what Paul describes as the fruits of the Spirit, this is our response to the deep hurt and the deep suffering, the deep need for the love of Christ in this world. And what does Paul say the fruits of the Spirit are? Well, their love, their joy, their peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I mean, even just hearing these words uh, feels soothing, doesn't it? Just hearing them brings a sense of calm, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Before in these ways, through our love and our joy and our peace and patience, through these ways, God seeks to bring his love, God seeks to bring healing into this world through the fruit which the Holy Spirit is growing in each of us. 
God seeks to respond to that hurt and the pain in this world. God seeks to indeed connect people with the vibrant love of Jesus. He threw us through the fruits of the Spirit. God is working in incredible ways in this world. See, the fruit of the Spirit, they're not things which we can you know, grow and cultivate within ourselves. I mean, we can try, but we, can, we would always come up short if we're relying on our own efforts. Just like a, a tree doesn't try and grow the fruit that comes off of it. And the fruit is just an outpouring of who it is. The fruit of the Spirit is exactly that. It's the fruit of the Spirit working in us. It's what the Holy Spirit grows in us as we uh, are rooted in Christ and are growing together in God's Word. The Spirit this grows that fruit in us. And then we branch out and we bear that fruit of the Spirit in our lives and into the lives of of others and in doing so we're connecting people with the vibrant love of jesus of course there are are so many ways in which the fruit of the spirit can be brought to bear into the lives of our neighbors and our community a lot of them in in small but significant ways and you no doubt uh, have done just that throughout these past weeks uh, bringing uh, the the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness, self-control, you've, you've brought these, I'm certain of it, to bear in the lives of your neighbors. Uh, many of you have brought those to bear in my life over the past uh, few weeks and months, and it's been, been incredible. But in small and big ways, we have the opportunity to branch out in love. Each of us in our own communities or, or spheres of influence, the fruit of the Spirit makes itself known in, in these relationships that we have with the people who live next door to us, the people we work with, and the people we, we FaceTime or, or talk to on Zoom these days. The fruit of the Spirit makes itself evident in, in just our individual lives. And that's what and who God has called us to be. But as a, a congregation, though, we're actively engaging it and branching out in love uh, in some select ways, in, in, uh, in those, uh, taking those fruits of the Spirit that, that God has given us and, and coming together as a congregation and, and kind of outpouring them into our community. I mean, what are the, the, the ways that we branch out in, in love into our community? Well, we branch out in love at uh, the refuge. Uh, Pastor Ron Paulson, he continues to, to serve food for the many food insecure people in our community. And there's uh, volunteers from St. Mark who are, are helping him do that, uh, admittedly less so now uh, than, than previously. Uh, but, but we're branching out in love uh, as we serve at the refuge, branching out in love as we support Sunnyvale Community Services, branching out in love as we support them financially like we did for Holy Week and Easter and, and hands-on service projects. But the cool thing about our relationship with Sunnyvale Community Services is that they also play a role in our ministry. Many times people come to the church office seeking help or assistance in one way or another. Sometimes they're seeking food. Sometimes they're seeking financial assistance. But the fact of the matter is uh, we as a congregation are simply not set up to offer this kind of assistance in a, a meaningful, sustainable way. We just don't have the capacity and that's actually okay. That's okay. It's actually a good thing. We can focus on, on our role of connecting people with the vibrant love of Jesus. And Sunnyvale Community Services can focus on, on their role of being uh, providers of assistance and case management services. So often I'm able to, to refer people to Sunnyvale Community Services for the assistance that they're looking for to an organization that can help them in very uh, holistic, robust ways. To, to branch out in love to our community it doesn't mean we have to duplicate uh, the many services that are already in existence in our community. We can simply support them and, and refer to them. And that's the beauty of living in a community. We're able to live in these beneficial, uh, reciprocal relationships with one another. As we branch out in love to our community, we don't have to do everything. We can do what God has given us to do. And another one of those things that God has, has given us to do, an opportunity that he's placed uh, in, in our lap, literally right down the street from uh, our, our church uh, building, 
is the opportunity to branch out in love uh, with uh, and to Bishop Elementary School, this relationship that continues uh, to grow. See, for three years now, we've been uh, cultivating this relationship, supporting uh, the work that Bishop is doing to educate uh, our children in the community, preparing them to be, be citizens, both locally and internationally. And most notably, we've hosted their family reading night uh, the past two years, and we are set to go again this year before it was canceled due to the coronavirus. We're also uh, plugged in at Bishop in other ways. Earlier this year, the administration at Bishop, they, they offered me the opportunity to participate in their school site council. Their school site council is, is a group that offers feedback on the school's yearly plan and, and goals and evaluates the school's pro progress on their goals. Um, and as we went through uh, their plan for the coming school year just last week, St. Mark is actually written into that plan. They know that they can count on us to provide support or volunteers uh, for their programs, and, and they want to partner with us throughout the school year on different uh, projects that engage children and families and, and staff and teachers. Bishop also runs a, a program called Reading Partners, where community members have the opportunity to act as reading tutors for students who need some extra practice and support in developing their skills. It's also a really great program to be a part of. And this morning, we also have the opportunity uh, to roll out a, a brand new opportunity that enables our congregation to branch out not only here in, in Sunnyvale, but actually all the way to Guatemala. And many of you have uh, heard me talk about my trip last summer to Porta Abajo, Guatemala, in partnership with Faith Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. And I'm super excited to continue and continue to cultivate this partnership uh, which will actually serve to develop an even greater partnership between us here in the United States and, and the community of Porta Abajo. It's a relationship uh, of mutual support and friendship uh, as the people of Porta Abajo uh, work to create some long-term and sustainable change in their own community. It's a relationship of, of prayer for one another, and it's an opportunity for us to use our financial gifts to help support the emotional and environmental, educational and medical needs of children in that community. In St. Mark, uh, in our partnership, uh, we're responsible, we're committed to sponsoring 10 children from Porta Abajo as part of our partnership. Uh, if that's something that you are interested in being involved in, you can email Susan Ellison, uh, who will be coordinating that effort. Uh, her contact information will be uh, made available in an email it's being sent out tomorrow morning. So be sure and, and look out for that. But when this pandemic uh, subsides and, and international travel is possible once again, there will be many more opportunities to grow in this partnership between uh, us here in the United States and the community of Puerto Abajo. We'll be able to join others from Faith Lutheran in Appleton. And, and there's another church, Sunnyvale Christian Church in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, we'll be able to join them in partner visits and medical mission trips down to Porta Abajo. And through these amazing experiences, we'll have the opportunity to learn about Guatemala, learn about the community of Porta Abajo, and most importantly, uh, begin to build these lasting relationships with leaders and, and community members to, to uh, spend time with them, eat with them, pray with them. And we also uh, look for a, a, an opportunity uh, here as we uh, prepare um, for that, for a, a special uh, Guatemalan luncheon uh, that's coming down the road, uh, when it's safe to get to gather together and meet together and eat together once again. Uh, and again, in the, the email that's coming your way tomorrow, there'll be uh, all of this information as well as some Guatemalan recipes for you to try out at home uh, as we uh, wait for those opportunities uh, to, to eat together here uh, as a congregation and learn more about uh, this partnership and what, what it's going to look like um, but also help us anticipate that time when we're able to travel to Guatemala and, and meet the people of Porta Abajo in person. That's a lot, I know. God has given us many, many opportunities to branch out in love to our community as we uh, look for opportunities to serve, continue serving at the refuge, at um, Sunnyvale Community Services, at, at Bishop, and now in the community of Porta Abajo, Guatemala. So many opportunities God has given us to branch out, where he continues to grow in us the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control. 
He calls us to, to share these fruits uh, with others. See, we've been called uh, to be people who are free. We're free from the demands of the law. We're, we're free uh, from uh, that burden that, that, uh, that sits on our shoulders because the gospel of Jesus has set us free. And so now we're free from, we're free from sin and death and the devil. We don't, we don't have that to fear any longer. But now we're also free to, free to love and serve our neighbors, free to branch out in love to our community, indeed to the world, because our neighbors are both near and our neighbors are far away. But as we go, we know, we're confident the Holy Spirit equips us Holy Spirit equips us for these relationships by growing in us his fruit. We can't do it alone. It's, it's all the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul says against these things, there is no law. We're simply free to do them, free to manifest them in our lives. Amen.